Welcome back to my channel everyone. My name is Tia and this is Talking Schmidt and today we are here with we. I am here <laughs> with my uh, April TBR. I know that it's super late. Um, May has been a super chaotic month for me and I just haven't had a time to uh, get around and film it, but I figured better late than never. There's still some titles I really wanna talk about, so let's just get into it. So I'm just gonna go chronologically in the order in which I read them, and I do, as always, have my laptop here, just with my notes so I can remember uh, because it's been a while and I have a bad memory. So if you see me looking down, I'm just trying to remember what I read. So the first book that I read is The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. This is my first Patrick Ness that I ever read and I definitely can understand the hype now. I thought this was a really fun and interesting well-written story. Uh, this is about pretty much the other kids. Uh, it's set in a world where there are teenagers who are superheroes and it's about the kids that are just regular or aren't superheroes. Um, I thought that that was a really funny and um, interesting concept and I just overall really liked it. I'll definitely pick up more Patrick Ness in the future because like I said, I definitely understand the hype now. This was super enjoyable, way more enjoyable than I even thought that it would be. And I forgot to say, but I gave that four stars. Then I read The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This is a uh, adult romance all about this woman who has Asperger's or autism spectrum disorder and hires a male what's it called? Escort, sorry, I <laughs> totally spaced the word, escort to teach her how to be intimate and um, have sex and uh, just teach her how to be in a relationship and whatnot. And then obviously trouble ensues between the two of them. I gave this four stars, 4.5. Let me check story graph really quick because Goodreads doesn't do uh, point based ratings anymore, or not anymore, ever, still. Um, so let me check story graph. I gave it 4.5, that's what I thought. I loved that this is an own voices Asperger's rep um, book. I think that that's amazing and I love just the increase in representation with autism spectrum disorder in general. So uh, yeah, this was a super interesting one. I loved the, the relationship between the two main characters. I thought that they um, had really good communication and um, I felt their love was realistic and it wasn't like insta-lovey or anything like that. And this book was more than just a romance to me. It had so much depth and um, they go through familial hardships and uh, friendship issues and just everything like that. And um, I just thought that it was really well-rounded, uh, like smuttier romance. I thought it was really um, it had a lot of depth and uh, character development and I just really, really enjoyed it. So I highly recommend this one. I'm definitely going to continue in the series with The Bride Test. Um, so yeah, very excited about that one. Then I read Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey, which I gave 2.75 stars. Getting crazy. This is a shorter story. Uh, it's a futuristic dystopian western if you can believe it. So super interesting concept and something that obviously I don't think has ever been done before, at least not uh, anything that I've ever heard of. Let me know if there's any more because I really liked that idea. Um, but just a super interesting premise and setting. Uh, it is a shorter piece of work and with that I felt like um, some elements just weren't fleshed out as much as I would have liked them to be. Um, the, the characters weren't as developed, there were some confusing plot holes and, and plot lines that didn't really add up or make sense to me, and um, I either would have liked the story to be longer or just have uh, actually adjusted to its length um, and just not have tried to add in too much um, and overfill the pot. So I did like a lot about this book, but there were just those elements that made it about a three star for me. Um, I will say I loved the representation um, within this book. There's a, a ton of representation and a lot of discussion on that representation and it is on voices so I do think that that is um, something to keep in mind and I would still recommend picking it up. This is my second Sarah Gailey. I read, well this one, which I gave 2.75 and then I actually DNF'd The Echo Wife which is their new book coming out. It either already just came out or is going to come out, but either way it's a 2021 release and I had to DNF that one because it just wasn't vibing with me. So I think I'm going to try Sarah Gailey one more time 
I think, one more time, and then maybe just like not reach for their works as much because uh, it's not looking too good. So <laughs> we will see. But uh, yeah, I think I want to read We Were, or We Are Magic, We Were Magic. Um, so I think I'm going to try to pick that one up to see how I feel about it. But overall, Upright Woman Wanted, 2.75. It was just okay for me. Then I read Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia, and I gave this three stars. I'm super disappointed with this one because I really wanted to like it so much more than I did, and that just like broke my heart. Um, I loved, there are, the reason it gets three stars, I loved the ambiance, I loved the eerie and creepiness that this book has it's a i guess i should tell you what it's about even it's a uh gothic uh horror set in historical mexico about a socialite noemi who gets a letter from her cousin saying that she needs help at her estate that she had just moved to with her new husband uh they're his family's estate and she isn't doing so well health wise and she'd like noemi to come um come see her and whatnot so it's all about Noemi's travels to this estate and then kind of what happens from there and I loved like I said the ambiance and the eeriness creepiness it excelled at that it was absolutely amazing in that regard and I loved Noemi as a main character she was super headstrong and um, no matter uh, love interest or anything like that, she really didn't change or bend in any way to that. And it was just nice seeing a really strong female main character um, in a horror novel. I feel like we don't get that as much as we should. So, loved seeing that, loved her. My, the reason it only gets three stars for me, three stars is a good rating for me. It means I liked it. I didn't really like it, but I didn't not like it. It's just that I liked it, you know, it was just, it was okay. I liked it. Um, it's not a bad rating, but the issues that I had with this one came from the twists and the elements that were supposed to be really scary. There's a lot of body horror in this, and um, I personally didn't get scared. I didn't see the twists coming in any way. Um, I assumed some elements, but the overall twist, I don't know how anybody would guess that. It was super, super... Um, random and definitely like that gothic fantastical um have those sort of elements but uh yeah I don't know how anyone would have guessed it but I didn't like it um I didn't like the way it panned out I didn't appreciate the way in which the story went and um yeah I just it wasn't for me personally so I loved the the setting I loved the characters I loved the idea and um, the ambiance, but I didn't like the way that the plot went. So three stars for me. Um, I definitely, I think, going to pick up more from, from this author um, just because I did love the writing style so much and I'm hoping that uh, her other works will have a plot line that I enjoy more. But yeah, Mexican Gothic was still a good one in my opinion and I do still recommend it. Then I read Horror Store by Grady Hendrix, which I gave three stars. This is another one where, similar to Mexican Gothic, I really liked, um, I really liked the concept and idea and, um, and everything like that, and even the characters, but just the execution itself just didn't really work for me throughout the entire story. The plot just wasn't there for me. Um, so with Horror Store, I loved the, uh, the idea behind it with this whole Ikea-esque sort of, um, place, and listening to the audio was amazing. Um, it, they do, in between the chapters, there's these little, um, like, commercials, which I think in the book are just, like, spreads, like, more like a newspaper, but on the audio it sounds like a commercial, and it's just done really, really well, so I really liked those elements, um, and I just thought the idea behind it was really cool, but the plot, like I said, just fell flat. There was nothing really to it. I think I liked so many elements of the story separately, but then when they were put together, they just didn't flow. There were definitely parts where I felt kind of a sense of eeriness, and um, so I liked that ambiance that uh, that Hendrix brought into the story. But with the plot, like I said, I just I couldn't have cared less by the end. I, um, I thought the end was abrupt, and I didn't like it, and... Um, so overall, just three stars. Another one where uh, 
just kind of 50-50 elements I really liked and parts that I really, really didn't. So three stars for me. Then I listened to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Um, Girk and I actually listened to this one together and we gave it four stars. I think Girk gave it 3.5, but I gave it four stars. I thought this was a super exciting and, and um, a gripping thriller. Uh, it was pretty intense. Um, I would have liked more red herrings and a little bit more suspense. I feel like my favorite part of thrillers is kind of that um, adrenaline feeling of trying to figure out who done it, you know? And with this, uh, I never really, I never really got that feeling. I just found this really, really slow in the first like 75%, and then the last 25% was like super, super intense. And I would have liked still that intensity maybe in the end, but like I said, throughout the whole novel, I would have appreciated more thrill and a couple more like red herrings and you know thinking one thing then it gets disproved and and stuff like that that's one of, probably my favorite part of like thriller suspense novels is just trying to like follow the mystery and, and solve it myself as i'm reading but this didn't really do it for me this was more like a, a kind of a hard-hitting contemporary not so much a thriller in my opinion overall still really good um probably going to continue in the series and just see um what follows in these characters lives and uh yeah i liked it then I read The Dark Tide by Alicia or Alicia uh, Jasinska, um, which I gave one star, which I'm super disappointed in because this was on my most anticipated list for 2020 releases and it just did not work for me. This is about an island that uh, witches kind of rule over in a way and pretty much they have to take someone from the island fall in love with them and then sacrifice them every single year so that the island doesn't um, drown or, or what would you call that? Sink, I guess. Doesn't flood with water. <laughs> I forget like exactly what it's called. But yeah, the water level starts to rise if they don't sacrifice somebody every single year. So it's coastal vibes, it's small town vibes, it's witch, it's sapphic, like it's everything that you would ever think I would love and yet I hated it. There were so many plot holes, like I'm not even kidding. I was so confused about what was going on like half the time. I could not follow, I didn't understand um, most of what was going on and I would even listen to parts over again and I still was never given like an explanation or a description of what was happening. I also wish that there had been a little bit more background like besides just saying like, oh, the witches do this every single year, there wasn't any history. Like, why do they have to do that every single year? Where did that start? How did that start? You know what I'm saying? Like, like no background on the magic system or why that even really is. Like, they would do something, but they wouldn't explain why. Pretty much the whole plot was something that wasn't explained. So um, I just didn't like that. Uh, what else? The uh, main character, her older brother is super abusive to her, like physically and emotionally. And it's just like brushed over. Like he's like, like very obviously abusive. Like, like I think she's in like a cast or something like that, if I'm remembering correctly from her ankle because of him. Like very abusive, like emotionally and um, verbally mentally <laughs> like he's just physically he's like an abusive person and it's never fixed it's never corrected um it's discussed a little bit but um but not to the extent that feels like it warrants having him be abusive i don't get that writing choice i think if you're going to include something that's that harmful and could be super triggering to readers um you need to challenge it in every single way and from every single angle and this was just like brushed over like it's you know no big deal when it's a huge deal that a lot of people struggle with every single day and and majorly affects their lives and it wasn't really discussed or challenged and i hated that that alone would have given it one star for me overall i just really really did not enjoy it it was totally something that i could have loved if the execution had been completely different it was just dumb i just did not enjoy this at all which sucks it was all my most anticipated but i just hated it and then the last thing that I read in April was Frankenstein and a collection of other short uh, stories by Junji Ito. This is, like I just said, a collection of um, 
his works, his shorter works, and then there's also his version or retelling of Frankenstein in the beginning. Um, this is a manga, and uh, I loved it. I gave it five stars. There were some of his shorter stories that I didn't enjoy as much, um, just like with any collection or anthology or anything like that. There's always going to be some I feel like you like less than others. Um, but the ones that I loved, like Frankenstein included in that, um, the ones that I loved, I really, really loved. So I just had to give it five stars. And I'm definitely going to pick up more of his work in the future. This was my first Junji Ito. And I was in love with the art style and, um, and everything. It is, if I didn't say, which I don't think I did, horror manga. Like very intense horror manga. So if you're into that, and you don't know who Junji Ito is, which I don't know how he's like the godfather of it, um, then I highly recommend uh, his work because it was insane. So that is everything that I read in April. Again, I'm sorry that this is like a later video, um, but I hope that regardless you guys enjoyed still hearing me talk about these titles and I promise I'll be better about trying to like have a more timely schedule in the future. But yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Be sure to leave me a comment and let me know maybe what you read in April, your favorite thing that you read in April, and uh, like this video and subscribe for more content from me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!